Hello, listeners. This is Russell. Welcome back to Channel 14. This is how to become an audiobook narrator, post-production processing, normalization. There are a lot of things that can be done to an audio file after it's been recorded. Some of them actually need to be done sometimes, but just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. I lean more toward the Rob Mays' school of thought that is summarized by less is more. Throughout this series, a recurring theme is that your goal should be to prevent having to do any post-production of your audio files, or to minimize that as much as possible, by addressing the issues while you record. Of course, there are great plugins for Audacity or whatever DAW you use, but assume that any processing will reduce the quality of your recording, and if you can avoid it, you keep your recording sounding cleaner by not having to do any processing. This is one application of knowing our priorities of the building blocks. You can put your money or your effort into your mic or your room or whatever is your weakest link, and you won't have to compensate in post-production or with plugins to get a clean sound. If your recording is clean, you won't need to run noise reduction on it. With good technique, you can avoid most of your mouth noises, and you won't have to do click removal. Position the mic correctly, and you won't have to try to get rid of the pops and booms that you get from your plosives. Work hard for the best original recording you can get, and you'll be glad that you did on the back end. Realistically, though, you can't get your recordings to standard without some processing. And the first one we're going to talk about, and probably the easiest one to figure out, is normalization. To put it succinctly, to normalize an audio file is to set the overall volume so that the loudest part of the recording is at an acceptable level. It's your overall volume control, but it's built into the file itself. Now, LibriVox has a technical spec that files have volume peaks no louder than negative three decibels. Now, what does that mean to the average voice actor? <laughs> Probably not much, which is fine, because as the talent, you don't need to know all the engineering. What you need to know is how to make your files conform to that spec of negative 3 dB peaks. In Audacity, it's very straightforward. After you edit your file, you select the waveform and go to the plugins menu list and choose normalize, set the value to negative 3, and hit OK. And that's that. Let's take a quick look at the process in Audacity. What I have represented here is possibly three different recording sessions. Maybe you're working on the same project, but uh, you've recorded some at the beginning of the day, some toward the end of the day, different mic placements and so forth, and you have varying volume levels within each one. You can see from the waveform that this middle one is much louder than the other two. Now these are really short in duration, so they would not represent in reality what you're gonna do but the length of the cut doesn't matter. I've created this to simulate a real life experience. Let's listen to just the beginning few seconds of each of these segments to hear the difference. For them, the end justifies the means, apparent conflicts in the book. Two examples. In part four, the author admonishes here because the effective use of the database can make you ride your way into his heart. This can mean many things to many persons. So it's fairly obvious there, and it's exaggerated, but you will have variations as you record from session to session. To take care of these, to get them all to sound the same, it's a real straightforward process. We're, we're going to highlight the entire track, go to Effect, and Normalize. And as we've said before, I have uh, my setting to negative 3.1 decibels because that works best for me. Make sure. Uh, ACX likes what comes out. If you want to set that to 3.0, that's fine. You'll find a process that works for you. Now I'm going to do it for that section. Do the same thing. Effect, and here's a nice thing within Audacity. You can just repeat the process. And you'll see that waveform now jump down to more match what we've got here. Let's watch the third one. A real quiet section here. Effect, repeat, normalize. And it's brought that up. Now let's go listen to them once again, listening just for volume differences. For them, the end justifies the means, 
to reconcile some apparent conflicts in the book. Two examples. In part four, can make you ride your way into his heart. This can mean many things to many persons. Much, much different than you had before. You don't have to grab the volume dial and turn it down when you get to this section and then crank it back up so you can hear the final part of it. They're all normalized to minus 3 dB and you have a nice even listening experience. Now, let's make a little change here. I'll come back in just a second and have maybe a little uh, different approach, a more real life scenario. This may be more representative of how you're working within Audacity to record, where you're not working across multiple tracks like we had a second ago, but in one continuous track, and you're just append recording onto the end of that as you go along. It's very common. In fact, it's probably more common. Here's the problem. Now, you've seen this if you've done some recording. Some are some sections quiet, some very loud. I want to fix this. So we'll go to Normalize, select the track, go to Normalize, minus 3.1. Now watch what happens to the WAV file as we uh, normalize the process. It does change, but notice the differences still exist from section to section. The process here is that normalization looks at your entire file, finds the single highest point, and adjusts everything in the file so that highest point is the limit. Now, that presents a problem because I still have differences between these sections. Listen to the drop-off here. Can make you ride your way into his heart. This can mean many things to many persons. Completely unacceptable. No one wants to listen to an audiobook or a narration that way. So if this is how you've done your recording in Audacity, it's okay. It's still fixable. But instead of addressing this file as a whole, we have to address it part by part. So we'll take... Uh, maybe Monday's recording, the first section here, repeat, normalize. I'll take the second section here. I might need to zoom in so I can select it better. What I can see visually as being a loud section, repeat the normalize. And then I'll take the last quiet section and repeat the normalize. Now we look at the whole thing. And it's much more in line. Let's listen to this drop. What used to be a huge drop off here. This can make you ride your way into his heart. This can mean many things to many persons. And that, that does what we want it to do. Now, throughout the whole thing, we've got a, a consistent level. I can upload this to LibriVox and probably get through the QA without a problem. So that's normalization. Your homework? Experiment. Find out some things. Listen for differences between the normalization and uh, just experiment with your own recordings, taking small sections where you see uh, maybe quiet areas of a recording where you see a peak. What might happen here where I have this one loud peak or here where I have this loud peak? What can I do with normalization to make those sound the same across the file? Now, when you get ready to apply filters or do any kind of post-production, you need to make it a regular practice to critically listen to your audio before and after you do any processing to it. Not only that, you should take a look at your audio. Use the waveform display like we did in Audacity to find out what your recording looks like. You can hear it with your eyes, kind of like breathing through your eyelids if you've seen Bull Durham. Most likely, when you've done uh, with normalization, the amplitude of the waveform will be noticeably greater. That's a good thing. What you don't want, well, one of many things you don't want, is a recording that people have to turn the volume up to hear correctly and then turn it back down before the next thing plays because it comes in too loudly. It's like listening to classical music as you drive, constantly having to adjust the volume, although that's done on purpose. And normalization doesn't really apply to that phenomenon. Your recordings should have about the same volume as most other recordings people will listen to. It shouldn't sound too loud, and it shouldn't sound too soft. It should sound normal. Huh. I guess that's where the term came from. Thanks again for watching today. Please leave your questions and comments below. We'll see you next time.